39 years after Chernobyl, Belarus's experience and recovery. The Chernobyl disaster, a name etched in history, occurred on April 26, 1986. This catastrophic event had profound and lasting consequences, particularly for Belarus. Our focus is to provide a concise overview of the disaster's history, its far-reaching consequences, and the extensive recovery efforts undertaken by Belarus. The Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant, or CHNPP, was located in Ukraine, strategically positioned near the Belarusian border. Specifically, it was situated 18 kilometers from the town of Chernobyl, 150 kilometers from Kiev, and a mere 16 kilometers from the Belarusian border. During the 1980s, the THNPP stood as the most powerful nuclear plant within the Soviet Union. Unit 4 of the CHNPP was commissioned in December 1983, marking a significant expansion of the plant's capabilities. On April 25, 1986, a series of safety system tests were scheduled to take place at Unit 4. However, the reactor shutdown was unexpectedly postponed, leading to a cascade of control difficulties. In the early hours of April 26, at 1.24 a.m., an uncontrolled power surge overwhelmed the reactor, resulting in a series of devastating explosions. The explosions led to the reactor's destruction and ignited widespread fires. The accident resulted in the release of nearly the entire spectrum of accumulated radionuclides into the environment. Among the most critical were iodine-131, cesium-134, cesium-137, and strontium-90. Initially, the primary danger stemmed from radioactive iodine, which concentrated in the thyroid gland. Over the long term, cesium-137 emerged as the main dose-forming radionuclide, posing a persistent threat. Belarus received approximately 35% of the total Chernobyl radiocesium fallout in Europe. This contamination was quickly defined as a national environmental disaster for Belarus. Over time, the contaminated territory in Belarus has decreased from 23% to 12.3% based on cesium-137 levels. As of January 1, 2025, approximately 1,203.0 thousand hectares of forest fund remain classified as radioactive contamination zones. The majority of these contaminated forests fall under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Forestry and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environmental Protection. The external radiation dose is gradually decreasing due to the natural decay of cesium, Lunda 37. However, a particularly tense situation persists within the Pulaski State Radiation and Ecological Reserve. This reserve contains significant proportions of the radionuclides deposited during the accident. The contamination patterns across Belarus were notably non-uniform, largely influenced by prevailing meteorological conditions at the time of the accident. The 30-kilometer zone surrounding the Chernobyl station experienced extremely high levels of soil contamination. A distinct northwestern trace of contamination extended through the Gomel, Brest, Grodno, and Minsk regions. A third significant area of contamination was located north of Gomel and in the central parts of the Mogilev Oblast. These varied patterns presented unique challenges for remediation and public health efforts. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, the government implemented a series of measures aimed at protecting the population. Evacuation efforts were initiated in areas where radiation levels exceeded 25 millirunchens per hour, initially focusing on a 10-kilometer radius around the plant. The Chernobyl disaster profoundly impacted settlements and populations across Belarus. A staggering 3,678 settlements, home to 2.2 million inhabitants, fell within the contamination zone. Tragically, 479 of these settlements ceased to exist altogether. Approximately 137,700 people were officially resettled 
primarily from the Gomal region, the area most heavily affected. In addition to the official resettlement programs, an estimated 330,000 people independently left the contaminated territories. The list of affected settlements is reviewed and updated every five years to reflect changing conditions. Currently, 1859 settlements remain designated as radioactive contamination zones. Almost 930,000 people continue to reside in these areas, including approximately 181,000 children. These territories are located within the Gomel, Mogilev, Minsk, Brest, and Grodno regions. Despite the ongoing challenges, positive socio-economic development trends are evident in many of the affected areas. A comprehensive radiation monitoring system has been established as an integral part of the National Environmental Monitoring Framework. This system comprises a wide network of observation points and accredited laboratories. Monitoring activities encompass atmospheric air, soil, surface water, and groundwater. Oversight and control are exercised by several key government bodies, including the Ministry of Emergency Situations, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environmental Protection, and the State Committee for Standardization. The Permanent Environmental Monitoring Network includes 120 dedicated radiation monitoring points. The production and sale of products exceeding permissible radionuclide levels are strictly prohibited. A robust radiation control system is in place for foodstuffs and agricultural products. A state register is maintained to track individuals exposed to radiation, ensuring targeted support and monitoring. Social policy is strategically focused on the most vulnerable populations affected by the disaster. Benefits and compensations are provided in accordance with established legal frameworks. Efforts are continuously underway to improve the quality of medical care available to the affected population. Special medical examinations are conducted to facilitate early disease detection and intervention. New medical institutions and specialized centers have been established to address the specific health needs of the affected communities. The Republican Scientific and Practical Center for Radiation Medicine and Human Ecology in Gomel serves as a leading institution in this field. A purposeful state policy is in place to address the long-term consequences of the Chernobyl disaster. This policy encompasses a range of measures designed to tackle radiation, environmental, medical, and socioeconomic challenges. State programs serve as the primary instrument for implementing these measures. Five state programs have been implemented since 1990, each building upon the previous efforts. The sixth program, covering the period from 2021 to 2025, focuses on social protection, radiation safety, and socioeconomic development in the affected regions. Belarus actively participates in international collaborations to address the Chernobyl legacy. Numerous international projects have been implemented within the country, leveraging global expertise and resources. Joint activities are also undertaken within the framework of the Union State to overcome the consequences of the Chernobyl disaster. Belarus has undergone a remarkable transformation, evolving from a recipient of humanitarian aid to a partner and expert in addressing the challenges of nuclear disasters. The country has developed unique expertise in various fields, including medicine, ecology, emergency preparedness, the production of clean products, and land reclamation. This expertise is now shared with the international community it's been 39 years since the Chernobyl disaster, and its impact still echoes through science, history, and human lives. If this story moved you, give the video a like, subscribe for more deep dives, and let me know in the comments. What part of the Chernobyl legacy do you think we should never forget? Thanks for watching. And remember, understanding the past is the only way to protect the future.